Right, so it's now a month after the US and the UK decided to go to war against the Houthis in Yemen, who of course declared that they would stop all Israeli shipping in solidarity with Gaza. A blockade on Israeli shipping, and despite being the poorest Arab nation going, with its own civil unrest, and having been on the receiving end of Saudi attacks for eight years, they've made good on their threats, using drones and speedboats to drive off much larger ships, and rendering the southern Israeli port of Eilat virtually redundant. The trouble is, we have the West going, how very dare you stop Israel from defending itself by committing genocide in Gaza? Who do you think you are? You need to know your place. And so came Operation Prosperity Guardian, chiefly led by the US and the UK. All this has achieved was those same drone attacks being aimed at US and UK shipping, and those two countries getting added to the Houthis Red Sea block list. Then came the strikes against Yemeni land targets to try and stop the Houthis, but... That hasn't worked either, because if the West thought this was all the Houthis had, they were sorely mistaken. Right, so with so many other things going on, it's been a while since I covered the goings-on in the Red Sea and the Houthi responses to having been bombed by the US and UK in response to their actions against commercial shipping headed to or from Israel. There have been no fatalities whatsoever caused by the Houthi drone strikes and their speedboat harassment. They created a whole new form of naval blockade, the first time in history that such a blockade had been achieved without the need for a very expensive to maintain navy, such as the advantage the Houthis have in terms of geography, being able to cause chaos at the narrow Bab el Mandeb Strait, the Red Sea itself none too wide itself either, and nor indeed is the Gulf of Aden leading into the strait. That's a lot of Yemeni coastline to get past for anyone wanting to access the Suez Canal, the shortcut for some 12% of global trade. The excuse was made. The Houthis are attacking all shipping, except they weren't just that destined for and leaving from Israel. Still now, there are stories about a ship from this country or that country getting struck by Houthi attacks. But it is not where the ship is registered that counts. It is whether it is bound for Israel or not, and thanks to our involvement in trying to stop the Houthis by force, instead of doing the right, just, and frankly, as now can be seen, far easier option of just stopping Israel committing genocide. As soon as Israel stop attacking Gaza, Yemen will stop attacking shipping. It's all that simple. Stopping them by force has not worked. Killing Houthis, the first people to actually die in all of this blockade business of Israeli shipping, hasn't stopped them either. They aren't wired up that way. They're quite prepared to die for the cause. And it is costing us and the US a bloody fortune shooting down cheap drones with very expensive missiles and of course the knock-on economic effect from our goods having to be diverted all the way around Africa now. But if the West thought the Houthis were at the limits of their abilities and their armaments, funded by Iran as they are, the media does like to remind us of that, don't forget, then we were sorely wrong. On Saturday past, for example, the Houthis deployed for the first time a submarine drone. Now these are a bit dearer than the ones they've been playing with so far that fly around in the air and were developed by Iran. So if Iran backing them still comes as a surprise to you, no matter how many times on the news these rebels get introduced as Iran-backed Houthis, it should be beyond doubt by now. I'm still waiting for them to address the Israeli Defence Forces US-backed, though. Anyway, it's a new toy in their arsenal. They aren't dissimilar to torpedoes, apparently, except they travel more slowly, although do have longer range. And although it got picked up and destroyed, along with a drone boat and three anti-ship cruise missiles, it shows the Houthis are upping their game, are not backing down, and are never likely to, because they simply don't quit. And Iran will keep supplying them for as long as necessary, and no matter how many headcase US politicians want to bomb Iran, even Genocide Joe, surely, isn't that stupid. Not even for Israel's sake. I am perfectly prepared to be ridiculed and proven wrong on that, of course. Anyway, now these missiles the Houthis are firing are a bit of a step up in the expense department from the drones they were using before. Uh, there are missiles coming in at around $10,000 each. However, shipping isn't necessarily their only targets, since the US have been deploying their Reaper drones off the coast of Yemen. They've been using their MQ-9 Reapers, long-distance, large drones capable of missile deployment in and of their own right. And... They've been going around in the area and up and down the Yemeni coastline. And last Sunday, the Houthis reported they'd shot one down. So they'd spent one of their $10,000 missiles used to bring down a drone, which is worth $30 million. And that was the second one the Houthis had brought down, apparently. 
This is where they are winning most of all, because the cost to those taking a stand for Gaza against Israel and those aiding and abetting them is peanuts compared to the cost, not just in military hardware, but trade as well. Back to the shipping we go, though, because in the last few days, the Houthis have not only brought down that Reaper drone, but they've taken out three cargo vessels as well, belonging to the UK and the US. All our attacks have served is to make ourselves targets too. On Saturday, the British registered Belize flagged cargo ship Ruby Mar hadn't even made it as far as the Bab el Mandeb Strait, having left Saudi Arabia and destined for Bulgaria and planning to take the Suez Canal as their chosen path. But they were approaching the strait through the Gulf of Aden when they got hit by Houthi missiles. According to the Houthi military spokesperson Yahya Sari in a televised address on the attack yesterday, he said the Ruby Mar had suffered catastrophic damages and came to a complete halt. As a result of the extensive damage the ship suffered, it is now at risk of potential sinking in the Gulf of Aden. During the operation, we made sure that the ship's crew exited safely. There are claims going around the ship has now sunk, though this at time of writing is still to be confirmed. What our government in the UK have confirmed is that the crew were indeed rescued and that the ship was taking on water, so it may well be true that this will be the first hooty sinking of a vessel so far. Karma says it had to be a UK vessel though, really, didn't it? It wasn't the only ship attacked though. The day after the Rumi Bar attack, the US-owned Greece-flagged cargo ship Sea Champion was hit. Now, they'd left Rosario in Argentina and were actually bound for Aden in Yemen. They were on their way to Yemen. Later that same day, another US vessel, the Marshall Island-flagged Navis Fortuna, was also struck by missiles, having left Enore in India, bound for Ravenna in Italy. Fundamentally, all the US and UK have done by increasing their strikes on Yemeni targets, whatever they are, are not working. Saudi Arabia pounded the Houthis for eight years, poor as they are, and before they were forced to give up. The US and UK will have no more effect on them than the Saudi Arabia did. Instead, the Houthis have brought bigger weapons to bear now, have upped the ante, and while still seeking to preserve life, as shown by their rescue of the crew of the Ruby Mar, undermining narratives that they are just mad and bad rebels, while exposing the West for being as indifferent to Yemeni lives as they appear to be of Gazan ones, they won't back down. They won't stop. And the longer the US and UK insist on these attacks, the more embarrassing it's going to get as their failures will keep getting exposed. Meanwhile, on the other side of the coin, especially in terms of who is a terrorist and who isn't, it was less than a month ago that Yemen declared the US and UK as terrorist states. And given their conduct in the Middle East, well, for a lot of us, we wouldn't go out of our way to necessarily argue against that, would we? Look at it from their point of view, for heaven's sake. You can get the details of this story on this video recommendation next, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next bid. Cheers, folks.